Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks for joining me on today's tutorial video. Today we are discussing the pros and cons of an Andy and Plying bracelet. I will show you how I make it and give you the tips and tricks that I've learned. And all the way throughout the end of the video, I chatter about um, how it works and why it can be a better option than a center pull plying ball, but it is by no means the better choice all the time. Uh, so have fun, experiment, enjoy today's video, and uh, I will see you next time. When I first learned how to do an Andean bracelet, I was told to come around the back of the hand and around the finger, but that just pulls the finger back and back and back. And that's very uncomfortable and cuts off circulation. So I've learned to do it from the palm of the hand. So you come around the wrist, go around that middle finger and go back the way you came in. Always back the way you came. You might be able to see it that well. I'm going to put this down on the floor. So if I came up this side of my palm and went around the far side of the finger, then I want to go back around that side. Go across the back of the wrist, come up to the middle finger, the far side of the middle finger, and then back across the direction it was going. Always follow your trail back. <clears throat> Otherwise you'll end up with tangles. What this does is it creates overlapping loops. A loop this way, this way, this way, this way. You're not actually going in a circle. So there's never a time when you're actually going all the way around this finger or all the way around the wrist. The only reason there's this here is because I wrapped it around my wrist a full time before I began to wind. So that's actually attached to the wheel. And it doesn't matter how you start, as long as you are crisscrossing your circles, your loops around your finger, um, following the correct pattern, how you do it isn't that critical and it goes quite quickly once you get the hang of it but teaching yourself muscle memory that's the hard part I can't tell you how many times I've tangled up my yarn trying to do this if you don't know which way you've gone check the top loop the most recent loop you'll want to do the opposite always always go to the far side of the finger so if you're coming up from the thumb side don't go between the first and the middle finger. Go between the middle finger and the ring finger. And then go back. And on the other side, you, will, you go past the finger. Go between the ring finger and the index finger. I hope that makes sense. I had some questions um, about how to make a flying bracelet. So I thought I would just take a moment to answer those. I'm almost done. It's a good idea to take off your other bobbin because the, the leader is uh, wanting to get picked up. And there we have it. So normally all you would do, oh, slide it off your finger you don't want to open this up. That's my end. Just transfer it to the other hand and the way you do it isn't critical at all. So and you don't have to have your yarn attached to the wheel to do this. Um, this is how I'm doing it in this one instance. So if you're not making a knot like I'm doing, um, 
you just lay, you overlap the ends of your singles a little bit and you allow the twist to, to catch it and you keep going. And it literally, once you get it washed, you cannot tell. But I'm actually going to break the other end and tie a knot and then I'm going to reattach. And it doesn't matter how messy it is because that's going to get broken. And there you have it. And this Andean bracelet does not add or take away from the twist that you originally put in your singles. Um, and that's one of the reasons I really, really love it. Also, don't like having it around my wrist. Um, I feel like I can control it better when it's in my fingers like this. But uh, so I'll always end up like this, even if I start with it on my wrist. At some point, it will creep up onto my hand. And if I'm not careful, I'll let go of it, and I'll have a tangled mess. What's happening is the two yarns are going the same direction together, back and forth, back and forth they're not going in circles. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always work this well. For some reason it is today. Anyway, that's how you do an Indian flying bracelet. There's where my loops were, right here. I don't want to lose that. Not until the very end, anyways. Now, they make, uh, some people make tools for Indian flying, and I think that's absolutely lovely. And I really adore having one. But for small amounts of yarn, this works incredibly well. I think it's easier to maintain the tension and everything um, from an Indian bracelet than from a center pole ball. So I'm all done. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.